that when we understand that we do come with a lot of baggage, you know, from our upbringing or, you know, nowadays there are so many studies saying how the DNA carries memories from other generations. Go figure what is the trauma that is in the family, right? Or in the body. And this all just, just represents blind spots, like things that you can't see that you're doing all the time. And you're just not seeing those things, like these two patterns. So I love to talk about blind spots all the time, even whenever I'm creating content, because people are like, oh, wait, there are these blind spots? I can see one now. And then it's not a blind spot anymore. At least you can watch it. That's kind of what happened with me, a huge blind spot, right? I wasn't seeing that I was hurting my body so much until someone told me and had to show me my blood work. because. Mm -hmm. Talking to me didn't serve me at all <laughs> so, or pointed it out like you're working too much. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm feeling great. But the body doesn't lie. So I think that that's my biggest thing. It's, it is it is to be the one that sees the blind spots. Mm -hmm. That being through behavior, language is huge. Like you can listen to people's blind spots when you listening to them talking or simply their numbers, show me your income statement, show me your bank accounts. Let me, let me see the blind spots that are going on here. Mm. Uh, yeah. Because people really don't see what's happening. It's, mm. it's, it's a blind game. Yeah. Yeah. It does kind of take the, the other person to, um, see what what's really going on i think I, I feel like lots of times and everybody gets stuck and and hits plateaus and and mm -hmm. everybody has those blind spots mm -hmm. so i i feel like everybody has to have help <laughs> at some point yeah. or another yeah and you know carl um as a a coach myself and as a, an advisor i think that we, I'm going to include you and like everybody in this space, we are the ones that need more help even because um, we are walking the walk that other people will follow. So right. I, I, I feel that way that I think that's my belief. I think, you know, not necessarily other people may, may feel this way, but I do have a very strong belief that that walk means that someone else is following and coming to me to get that kind of help. And mm -hmm. the more I walk, you know, the longer is my walk, the more people can come and follow. Okay. So because of that, I'm always working with coaches, always. Uh, currently, I'm working with three. <laughs> and always for different purposes. So I believe also that we all have our genius. Uh, I love to work with people who specialize in something very specific, something super specific. So I always have a health coach to really honor my body and remind me of that. I always have someone that's helping me with a side of business strategy. And that although I'm a business strategist, I have my own blind spots. We all do. So there's always someone in that space helping me out. And there's always someone helping me out with my subconscious mind. So I'm always, you know, working with hypnotherapists or like anything that helps me tap into my subconscious mind. So it's like almost like the three dimensions of us uh, always working simultaneously. So I'm just telling this because if someone is listening to this, uh, Think about like how many of your own blind spots can be preventing you from even you know, like working with more clients or growing the business and mm -hmm. who can be the experts that can help you with that very specific thing. And, um, and that's how I've been managing this because it, at the end of the day, burnout is a trauma in the body. It leaves scars. And I'm always very careful with my energy and my own blind spots. So I surround myself with coaches and um, I, it's interesting that um, I'm seeing this movement as well, by right? people shifting mm -hmm. the beliefs about work, purpose, wealth, health. Like there is, there is a, a new way of uh, becoming successful and wealthy that's being presented to so many. And I feel I'm, mm -hmm. I'm in this wave. So it's almost as if like we are re-educating people on, 
on health and well-being and 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 wealth uh you know like the clear definition of wealth was always about finances and money when we know that that's not true and there's so many other things that affect wealth too i was right. just checking this interview with the former ceo of peloton he was a co-founder and ceo of peloton and because the company didn't go well he lost all of his money he was uh mm a billionaire he was he got billionaire status and he he is just now declaring that he's that broke wow. so uh, yes which is which is insane and that's why uh financial wealth doesn't mean anything there are so many other things underneath the surface of money that i i think that those things are coming to to surface more more strongly and I, i i believe that there is a like a reframe of the beliefs of money that we we have now in the business world right. so a trend that's extremely important is not a trend i would say but something that's coming to the surface is the importance of being service driven it's the importance of being impact driven and mm -hmm. always have a cause to your business. So even if you sell products or whatever services you offer out there, how is that adding value to society? How is that adding value to your community, to every single human being that has access to you? That has become that has been a more serious conversation uh in in business and people really crave this meaning. You know, people mm -hmm. crave the idea of being meaningful mm -hmm. of being mm -hmm. of value mm -hmm. and that yeah. is a complete no-brainer i think that big brands are now realizing this that if mm -hmm. they don't have a just cause like a just cause is a cause that's much greater than all the employees combined all the revenue all the profit like if they don't have a just cause people don't buy it anymore yeah yeah you know so yeah. that is really important that's why i appreciate your work too just when you're talking about finding purpose that's re that's true Thank everyone for uh, joining me uh, for another episode of Define Your Purpose and joining me today from Boca Raton, Florida is Miss Mariana Lacombe. Um, thank, thanks a lot for, for taking the time to speak with me today, Mariana. Absolutely. I'm excited. Thank you, Carl. Welcome. Um, you know, I, I think um, I like to call it define your purpose. Purpose is kind of the birthplace of ideas. And um, I, I like to ask people where they come up with their ideas to start to do what they do. Um, and I, I like to ask people how they, they got started. So maybe you could explain a little bit of your origin story to us. Yes. Well, I, I could say that there are many different milestones of my origin story right. uh but um i'm 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 gonna maybe get the milestone of where i started my coaching career because that's where i'm at right now in my advisory career as well so um i started my career very early i started working when i was 15 years old not because i had to but because i wanted to i remember going mm -hmm. to my first job and they wanted to pay me the set my salary which was something that would be equivalent to maybe a hundred dollars per month in that that was back in brazil and i'm like no i don't want to get paid you guys don't have to pay me i'm here to learn i should be paying you this is a school for me and but they had to pay me because that was the law so i had to get paid but i started very early and i always had this goal of growing personally a lot i went straight to psychology school and then i went straight to my mba and so i was 23 mm -hmm. 
already do an MBA, already working in corporate and wow. landing leadership positions. So all of these things happened very quickly in my life, you know, and I became a mom very early too, got married very early. Like everything was always very early. So by the time I was 28, I was already the director of human resources of a really large technology company, Brazil, like a multinational company. And I was overseeing more than 3000 employees and I was feeling great. I felt like I was a peak performer. I would work out every day. I would have the ideal body fat. You know, I would have all of those things. I had all my expenses paid, a C-level job, like all the cool stuff hmm. until a day I went to the gym and I couldn't move my legs. Like I couldn't do the exercise. I'm like, what's happening with me, right? Maybe I'm, I don't know what's going on. So I went to my doctor and when I did that, she told me I had burnt out. I was officially diagnosed with burnout and I'm like, no, that's not true. That's not real. This is not happening to me at all. And then she showed me my blood work and my body was internally completely messed up. Wow. So she told me that if I didn't stop working at that moment, I would be one of those people that actually have a heart attack at the gym before the age of 30, you know? So she was like, you're going to be one of those stories. I'm pretty sure someone knows the story of someone that was always very fit, would work out every day, work every day and have a heart attack, you know, at the gym while working out. So like, you have to stop. Mm -hmm. So I debated on that. I'm like, no, that's not true. You know, I would go to every single Tony Robbins event. I would go to all the cool stuff, you know, about the performance. I'm like, no, not me. Mm -hmm. But wow. it, it, it was true. So I started to notice my reaction when I would go to work. I would feel my body shivering. I would have palpitations. My, my heart would, you know, beat much faster. I would close my door. I wouldn't want to talk to anybody. And then I'm like, oh, wait, this is burnout. No, I'm withdrawing. I don't want to talk to people. I don't want to talk to anybody. And, and then I, I, I made a really difficult decision to stop working for three months. And then when I did that, I'm like, wow, I need help, like a different level of help. So that was the first time I hired a coach to help me out. And when this person helped me, I realized that I was sitting at the wrong side of the table. I was the one hiring people when I should be on the other side, helping professionals, <laughs> leaders, managers, people who are working hard, so, so hard to be able to reach certain levels of success. And then I decided just to get certified and, and become a coach uh, back then, or just to simply do that within my company. So I, you know, I created like a whole coaching program for my, my directors. I had like 22 directors going through this coaching process and the transformation was so crazy that I just decided to take the leap completely. So I quit my successful job to be able to be uh, a full-time business uh, and executive coach. And then since then, um, everything happened in my life. You know, that, that was 12 years ago, basically today. And, uh, and then I got to, to work with so many people. Like I, I have my own clients. I've always had my own clients, but I was one of the top coaches for Tony Robbins as well in his company. Yeah. I coach people in every wow. continent. And, you know, a decade later, that's where I am. So long story short, but I, I, I'm mm -hmm. telling this because I feel that so many experts, coaches, they want to do that to give back. I think we use our experience to be a mirror reflection of uh, um, how we actually get to help people in the now. So I did use that. I'm like, I don't want anybody else to go through what I had to go through. So mm -hmm. let me teach them something else that I've learned. I cracked the code, right, of energy, of recovery, of success without the hustling. And let me talk about this now so that people don't have to go through what I had to go. So that's my story. <laughs> that's my story, Carl. That's amazing. That I mean, it sounds like you really got just the help that you needed at that time with with the, the coaching and all. Yeah. And what is interesting about that is uh, 
that I come from human development, right? So I actually started studying psychology when I was 13. So back, so backing up a little bit, that's why I actually started to work mm. early. And, um, and I, my bachelor is in psychology. And so I was always very uh, focused on developing myself. I, I went to every single personal development event. I would read hundreds of books. And that's why it, I would never imagine I was in a burnout state. I, and I feel mm -hmm. like my yeah. mind was uh, stronger than my body, right? And then, but there was a point where my body couldn't take it anymore. So that's when I collapsed. You know, the, that, it was right. the body that didn't follow my mind. So I was mm -hmm. always getting a lot of help for my mind, but I wasn't getting help for my body. I think that was a mm -hmm. big thing. And I, I thought I was, but I was exaggerating, like by exaggerating too much, like putting my body on a level of strain that was above what I could take because I thought I was healthy. I thought I was fit. Yeah. I thought all of those things yeah. about me. Um, but the, the, the shock was so gigantic when I felt, when I saw that I was overworking when mm. I thought that was the norm, like that, yeah. I thought that was like the minimum that I could do, but it yeah. was so much more than what I could take, mm. you know? Right. Yeah. It, I think there's kind of a culture of, of overwork in our, our society too, that you, you're expected to pull all nighters in school and then get out of work and, uh, you know, work two jobs or, or whatever it is to get ahead and, and, um, it, it can be exhausting like that. And mm -hmm. I, I guess it sounded like you were, you're doing your, your exercising was actually just wearing you down more because you weren't taking care of yourself correctly, I guess. Huh? Yes. Yeah. I was working so many hours. Mm -hmm. I was working 12 hours a day. Easy. You know, I would mm -hmm. be on vacation. I would be working. And mm -hmm. I, I think that when you when you work like that, but you're doing something that you absolutely love, that doesn't feel like work. That's when we generate mm -hmm. energy from within. But I wasn't doing something that was inspiring to me anymore. So there was no energy being created in the work that I was doing. And then I was consuming all of the energy that I had in my body. It's almost like mm -hmm. you have a battery and instead of being having an extra battery, which is created by your external worlds, you know, when you're surrounded by people that you love or you're doing things that you love or you're working with clients that you adore, that that's feeding back to you. I did not have that that source. You know, I wasn't happy with what I was doing. Mm. So that was a big yeah, problem, right. too. Like as your mm -hmm. podcast about finding purpose, there was no purpose at all. I had mm. uh, the infamous so sucking job, you know, but mm. when you look at like people looking at me, they were like, oh, Mariana is so successful. She looks great. She gets, she has the money. She has the house. She has the car. Like she has all of those things, but right. it wasn't purposeful. I, I, there was no, no purpose at all. And that was, that's why I loved to uh, become uh, a, a coach and advisor because now the experience became the purpose. So, mm. uh, I, I, you have to transmute your pain into something great. I, I, I say often that I'm an alchemist because it's like transmuting this negativity into gold, something right. of value. Yes. So that's why I decided to now dedicate my career to help people with struggles that I overcame before, mm. because then now I have purpose. That's fantastic. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So you, and it, I guess you've come up with, with some, some systems around, um, the, the work that you've done with people, you've done enough of it and you've seen enough of the common problems. Do you, maybe you could talk a little bit about how you develop those systems and, and what that's like. Yes. <laughs> that's a really great question because, um, we, as human beings, we are beings of pattern. We, we we follow patterns. We think we have control over all the things we do, but we need patterns. We need repetition. Mm -hmm. So what I found is that there are many repetitive behaviors. Uh, there are patterns that I see everywhere when working with business owners, when working with experts, whoever wants to 
dedicate their life to serving others. Right. So, right. So if you're like, if you build a business, a lot of people are like, well, how can I do more for other people? So all of my clients are service-based. They're very service-driven. They're all about helping other people or adding value to society, you know, to countries, cities, places, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So pay attention to that. I did notice patterns and these patterns are everywhere. I've worked with people in every single corner of the world and I'm Brazilian myself, right? So I, I know that. So number one pattern is that we do tend to put others first and no wonder we need to let, to hear, um, how, how do you guys call that again? Um, you know, when you're flying, like whoever flight attendants, they have to tell you over and over and over and over again. Put the mask first on yourself, mm -hmm. then you help others. Right. Why? Because as human beings, we tend to put other people's first, other people first. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and that's a pattern everywhere. So that's that's important to notice because if let's say if you're a business owner and you're always putting other people first and you're last, you're not taking care of yourself. That's what I did with me. Mm -hmm. but you're also not taking care of your finances. You're not taking care of your sanity, of your body, of your relationships. And then you're giving it all to your business or your clients. Mm -hmm. At some point you will burn out. You will burn your money, your time, your energy, your body, your relationships, something's going to give. So that is a big pattern, you know, to put other people first or other things first, like the business. The business at the, at the end of the day is a group of people, right? So we always put our people first. <laughs> I think that's a big one. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then with that, there is another pattern that's very clear to me, which is that um, a lot of business owners tend to do everything alone or believe they have to handle it all or they have to be the responsible one. And then they tend to... Uh, have so many things going on at the same time that it's very challenging to get out of this loop of overwork. So there's always something going on. There's always something going on. They become firefighters. You know, like there's always a fire. There's always a challenge. There's always an emergency. And because they stepped up to be the business owner, they feel responsible to handle everything. Mm -hmm. Of yeah. course, that the gravity of this changes as you evolve with your business. But even with that, I've worked with business owners uh, that had like multiple seven figure businesses. And by the time they wanted to sell, for example, they did not believe the business could survive without them. And that's again, the same pattern, like, oh, I have to take care yeah. of it. I have to handle it. And that just, just puts you in a trap. Like there's no way out. If mm -hmm. you have to do it all and you're the only one that can do that and you're putting everybody first, <laughs> It does. You're pretty much mm -hmm. stuck. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It seems you know, like a lot of people fall into that too. <laughs> yes, exactly. So it's like, there's nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. You know, you're trapped in the, 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 the very tool or vehicle you created to have freedom. Right. But now it's, yeah. it's a trap. Mm -hmm. So you're not free to do the things you love. You're not free to make money. You're not free to go enjoy yourself because mm. everybody comes first. You have to take care of people. You have to do it all. And that's a cycle that I see in every business, even if you're a solopreneur or you've got thousands of people, you know, behind you. And there's some level of that, you know, there's some level of that, the same pattern. Right. That's what I see. Yeah. And I think it takes some self-awareness too, to, to, break that and to kind of to realize that you're you're spinning your wheels and overtaxing yourself like that mm -hmm. it yes can be, it can be difficult to um i i guess it's important to remember why you went into business in the first place <laughs> you kind of have to step back once in a while and ask yourself that if you're spending all your time at it <laughs> mm -hmm. That is true. Um, I, it's coming to me now to two different people that I worked with before. 
and actually one I'm still working with her, but they were in completely different places. One already had this multi-million dollar business going on. And the other one is still trying to break through 300K per year. So different places, different timelines, but the exact same pattern of uh, feeling bad about making money, feeling very bad about, because I mean, everybody else is a priority and it's not right for me to get to enjoy things when I haven't figured everything out. So I'm pointing it out just because like you could, you could see people in different places of their timeline, but the feeling is the same. So even the one making multiple seven figures is feeling very guilty about all the success the business is, is having and then neglects herself, neglects her health, her time, mm -hmm. overworks, works even harder, harder and harder and harder, right? And sabotages the body or relationships and all of that. Mm -hmm. And the other one here, you know, trying to break through 300K, feeling exactly the same way, same, mm -hmm. same, same thing but different levels, different degrees, but feeling as guilty as the other one. So I think that when we understand that we do come with a lot of baggage, you know, from our upbringing or, you know, nowadays there are so many studies saying how the DNA carries memories from other generations, go figure what is the trauma that is in the family, right? Or in the body. And, this all just just represents blind spots, like things that you can't see that you're doing all the time. And you're just not seeing those things like these two patterns. So I love to talk about blind spots all the time, even whenever I'm creating content, because people are like, oh, wait, there are these blind spots. I can see one now. And then it's not a blind spot anymore. At least you can watch it. That's kind of what happened with me. A huge blind spot, right? I wasn't seeing that I was hurting my body so much until someone told me and had to show me blood, my blood work because mm -hmm. talking to me didn't serve me at all <laughs> so, or pointed it out like you're working too much. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm feeling great. But the body doesn't lie. So I think that that's my biggest thing. It's, it, it is to be the one that sees the blind spots, mm -hmm. that being through behavior, language is huge like you can listen to people's blind spots when you listening to them talking or simply their numbers show me your income statement show me your bank accounts let me let me see the blind spots that are going on here mm. uh yeah because people really don't see what's happening it's mm. it's, it's a blind game yeah yeah it does kind of take the the other person to um see what what's really going on i think i i feel like lots of times and everybody gets stuck and and hits plateaus and and mm -hmm. everybody has those blind spots mm -hmm. so i i feel like everybody has to have help <laughs> at some point yeah. or another yeah and you know carl um as a a coach myself and as a, an advisor i think that we i'm gonna include you and like everybody in this space we are the ones that need more help even because um we are walking the walk that other people will follow so right. I, I i feel that way that i think that's my belief i think you know not necessarily other people may may feel this way but i do have a very strong belief that that walk means that someone else is following and coming to me to get that kind of help. And mm -hmm. the more I walk, you know, the longer is my walk, the more people can come and follow. Okay. So because of that, I'm always working with coaches, always. Uh, currently, I'm working with three. <laughs> and always for different purposes. So I believe mm -hmm. also that we all have our genius. Uh, I love to work with people who specialize in something very spe something super specific. So I always have a health coach to really honor my body and remind me of that. I always have someone that's helping me with a side of business strategy. And that although I'm a business strategist, I have my own blind spots. We all do. So there's always someone in that space helping me out. 
And there's always someone helping me out with my subconscious mind. So I'm always, you know, working with hypnotherapists or like anything that helps me tap into my subconscious mind. So it's like almost like the three dimensions of <laughs> us uh, always working simultaneously. So I'm just telling this because if someone is listening to this, uh, think about like how many of your own blind spots can be preventing you from even you know, like working with more clients or growing the business. And who can be the experts that can help you with that very specific thing? And um, and that's how I've been managing this because it, at the end of the day, burnout is a trauma in the body. It leaves scars. And I'm always very careful with my energy and my own blind spots. So I surround myself with coaches. And... Um, and I, I think that that's like a no brainer, like it's non-negotiable to be working at least with an expert that will walk you through your path so that other people can follow you later. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree. Absolutely. Um, so you, you've been, um, working with people for, for quite a while now. What, what have been maybe some of the lessons that you've learned about uh, your, your business and, and working with, um, with clients for so long. <laughs> yeah. Dozen years um, or so. <laughs> so, I mean, so many things come to my mind and I, I think that it really also depends on the kind of business you have. So I think that there are specific lessons for each, mm. but I'm going to just mentioned the, the first one that came to me, which is a lesson that I've been learning more frequently now, which is the kind of decisions that I am making, because sometimes business owners, they or experts, they make decisions about the business and they have a really hard time of pivoting when things are not working well. Mm. Yeah. Oh, not working well externally, meaning like you're not necessarily getting the results that you want or they're not working for you personally. Like you made a decision that you thought would be exciting, you thought would make you feel good, but then, I don't know, weeks later, months later, it's making you feel really bad, you don't like it anymore. So uh, the big lesson that I've been uh, paying more attention to is mm. that there are two types of decisions. There are decisions that you must commit to and stick to it and go all the way. And there are decisions that are very temporary very mm. temporary. So yeah. like um, a decision that maybe I made that was more permanent was I'm going to quit my corporate job and build my own business. And I, I was going to say come to the United States, but that that's not permanent. But like, you know, that one thing I'm like, I'm not looking back. I don't want a job anymore. Right. That to me feels like a very definite decision. Mm -hmm. Temporary decisions were something like, I'm going to now work with coaches. I'm going to help coaches grow their business. And I'm like, okay, great. But what if I also work with startups wanting to raise funds? Okay, great. Now, what if, what if, so the what ifs started to pop up as new decisions mm -hmm. that could be a yes, it could be a no. And if it's a yes, now it could be a no later. And I'm saying this because sometimes, uh, People believe that quitting is something really bad and they stick to a plan when that plan was gone, you know, and it's time to pivot and make new decisions instead. Mm. But sticking to a decision that should be temporary translates into stubbornness. Like you become stubborn mm -hmm. instead of mm. instead of determined. Right. So yeah. I've been working with some business owners on that because they made some decisions. They are so like uh, it was almost as if like it was written in stone when it's not, when it's a very mm. temporary decision and, and learning how to give yourself an opportunity to test something instead. Like you make a decision, you test something and see if it works. If it works, great. Mm. If it doesn't, just drop it. Yeah. If that's not quitting. Yeah. You yeah. Know? There has to be error to have trial and error. <laughs> yes. Yes. But because I feel like business owners are often very determined, right? They're people who just get stuff done. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. that determination becomes um, stubbornness. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, when they could learn how to be flexible, so, mm-hmm. or curious, I would say, you know, to be more curious, to experiment, to do different things and just be super clear about what is a definite decision. What is a decision that they have to stick to? Like my mm-hmm. decision was, I'm going to make my business work, period. And I'm not going to get another job, period. But for some people, that's a temporary mm-hmm. decision. And that's absolutely perfect. That's fine. Right. Like yeah. they can get a job and grow a business. They can just simply get another job, whatever that is. But mm-hmm. I, I, I think that, that was a, that's a big lesson for any business owner now to think if they're being stubborn about some decisions that they made or if they're being determined and if they realize they're being stubborn that they quit or they not the quit, like they pivot as fast as possible because that could be causing massive, you know, uh, leaks in the business in terms of time, energy, money. You could be wasting a lot of your resources trying to make something work that should be a no already. Yeah, yeah. I think the longer you're in business, the more you have to say no too. You, mm-hmm. to, you get so many offers and, and so many fronts and so it, it makes it so your your yes becomes like this coveted thing. And so when you, you say yes to something, it's almost like you have to, you, I think people get the feeling they have to stick with it because they gave it the yes. So the yes is so yes. important. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and like it could just be I yes for an hour or something. <laughs> yes. Yes. I agree with you. That's why that came to me now. I could give you so many decisions, but I always believe that whatever we talk about is what people need to listen to. So I, I'm going with that one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. So um, I wonder also about, I like to talk about where people are, are headed, um, you know, in, in business and, and life and all. I, so what do you, what do you see coming up? Um, are, you, are you expanding your, your company, I bet? <laughs> yes. Well, there's always an expansion. I'm all about evolution. Right. The name of my company mm-hmm. is Quantum Evolution. So I'm all about mm-hmm. evolution all the time. And um, I... It's interesting that um, I'm seeing this movement as well, right? People shifting mm-hmm. the beliefs about work, purpose, wealth, health. Right? There is there is a, a new way of uh, becoming successful and wealthy that's being presented to so many. And I feel I'm, mm-hmm. I'm in this wave. So it's almost as if like we are re-educating people on uh, on health and well-being and 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 wealth uh you know like the clear definition of wealth was always about finances and money when we know that that's not true and there's so many other things that affect wealth too i was right. just checking this interview with the former ceo of peloton he was a co-founder and ceo of peloton and because the company didn't go well he lost all of his money. He was uh, mm. a billionaire. He was he got billionaire status, and he he is just now declaring that he's that broke. Wow. So uh, yes, which is which is insane, and that's why uh, financial wealth doesn't mean anything. There are so many other things underneath the surface of money that I I think that those things are coming to to surface more more strongly and I, I i believe that there is a like a reframe of the beliefs of money that we we have now in the business world right. so a trend that's extremely important is not a trend i would say but something that's coming to the surface is the importance of being service driven it's the importance of being impact driven and mm-hmm. to always have a cause to your business. So even if you sell products or whatever services you offer out there, how is that adding value to society? How is that adding value to your community, to every single human being that has access to you? That has become that has been a more serious conversation uh, in, in business. And people really crave this meaning. 
You know, people crave the idea of being meaningful, mm -hmm. of being mm -hmm. of value. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. is a complete no brainer. I think that big brands are now realizing this, that if mm -hmm. they don't have a just cause, like a just cause is a cause that's much greater than all the employees combined, all the revenue, all the profit. Like if they don't have a just cause, people don't buy it anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. that is really important. That's why I appreciate your work mm -hmm. too. Just when you're talking about finding purpose, that's re that's true. Like if a business doesn't have purpose or people in the business, they don't have a purpose, like a common purpose to fight for, they don't stay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't sustain. Right. I, I kind of like to ask the question, what is rich and define what is rich because just having numbers in a bank account is not going to make you happy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that is true. It, it's and and a lot there there is a lot of um I, I think importance on today that is being placed on on value of the value that we have to offer others and um and I, I think that's an important part of of leadership that you're um offering value and and helping people um and supporting people rather rather than just um telling them what to do and what they what you know dictating how they should be um so i, I think maybe and, and and that's um also kind of related to coaching i think and that um there's more change happening faster and faster in our world now. And um, I think that's kind of what's part of what's given rise to coaching so much. Mm -hmm. Now the popularity of coaching is that in order for that to happen, that, that people need that, that support. Yeah. I agree with you. I, I think that uh, the more technology evolves, the more, we have to pay attention to the human side of things. I, yeah. I come from technology. I, I created my career in the technology space. Okay. And while I was studying psychology and human development, so I, I find that correlation to be very strong. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, 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 and people are way more open to that, 100%. Like when I started my career 12 years ago as a coach, that, that wasn't so uh you know open uh but now there is such a big opening and i've i've coached hundreds of coaches later so because i do believe in the power that we collectively have to be able to pay attention to this human side of things because uh, everything is about humans everything like a business is simply a group of humans working mm -hmm. together even if it's a, a one human <laughs> it's always a human a business doesn't exist alone Mm -hmm. Same thing with money, same thing with every single resource in the world. Money alone is worth absolutely nothing. It, it, right. It's the people that create the context of value. Right. Uh, right. So yeah. looking at the, this human side of things is what makes companies successful. It's what makes you successful in your career, in your business. It is your human side. That's the key. So yeah. that's why I'm very dedicated to that. Because that, and, and by the way, um, I was always the best math student of my school. So I'm very analytical. I'm all about the numbers too. I love all the scientific aspects of things. Mm. And I know <laughs> that we as humans, emotional beings are the key. Mm. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I think we're going to have to invent our way out of some of the problems that, that we're call out, we've caused ourselves <laughs> um yeah. especially like climate and all you know i i think that the only way to save ourselves is by inventing at this point um but i i think there's a lot coming with um being more connected to each other and um i i think the it could happen more not only through technology but through evolution um i, I think in I, I don't know if you've read uh carl jung 
that much about um, the human genome and and you know the the last time we added the chroma two chromosomes we developed the rational thought so um, the next the next chromosomes we add I've read are supposed to be collective consciousness so um, yeah you know maybe maybe that's where um, all this popularity, the internet and, and things like that are, are coming from is, is that we're pointing towards that mm -hmm. evolution. <laughs> yeah. It's funny you mentioned this because this is like fun fact about me. <laughs> I started studying psychology when I was a teenager because I had this mm. crazy dream with Greek mythology, with very specific names and creatures that I had no idea about. I was like 13. And then my my therapist specializing in Jung and Carl Jung, and she's like giving me this gigantic book of Greek mythology. And she's like, go find your dream. And my whole dream was there. I dreamed with Kronos, with Zeus, with a lot of other creatures. And I had no idea about those things. I'm like, how do I have access wow. to this? I'm 13. And mm -hmm. that's when I discovered the collective unconscious mind and how we have mm -hmm. access to so many things. We can have access to all knowledge in the world, in the in the universe, and how that works, how that happens. We are still going to figure that out. But mm -hmm. if that is real, it really is. So that's actually what led me to study psychology because I'm like, this mind is 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 fascinating, and yeah. I want to know more about that. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Yes. Yes. So, what what have you been um, studying lately? Then, what um, where do your interests lie these Good. days? If I might yeah. ask. <laughs> so, I think that back then maybe Carl Jung should have some conversations with Einstein because I'm fascinated by quantum physics and mm -hmm. how you know uh, the quantum worlds. Uh, works well. The name of our company is Quantum Evolution, so I'm very fascinated okay. by that. Yeah, okay, that's what I study the most. Okay, yeah, the quantum computing right now is really exciting. <laughs> Getting yeah. ready, I think, to make some amazing breakthroughs in that. I love, I love reading about that stuff, it's so interesting. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's the that's the thing I, I, I study the most right now, and how that translates into business operations and how you grow companies as well. So I'm very fascinated by that. So that's my my go-to thing. And I I read a lot. I do a lot of research. And um, I think that's, that's the most interesting science out there right now, <laughs> in my point of view, yeah. in my humble point of view. Yeah, <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> um, so... If someone wants to um, get a hold of you for for more information about your coaching, I mean, what what kinds of clients do you usually work with, and and uh, how how do you how does someone get started? Yeah, so there are many ways to actually reach out to me. I'm I'm definitely an open book, so finding me on LinkedIn is extremely easy, or just simply googling my name, you're going to find my website and all my social media. But I would say LinkedIn is so easy, because you can just find me send a request, and we can just jump on a call and talk. I, I work with business owners. So uh, entrepreneurs, founders who are wanting to be successful in their business, the timeline where they're at can vary, right? It can be right in the beginning of the timeline, or it can be in the, the, the last stages of their timeline when they're preparing to exit, when they're preparing to sell. Mm -hmm. So whoever, wh whatever you are in this timeline, if you are service-driven, if you want to become a better human being, if you're willing to make dramatic changes in your life and in your business, and if you're willing to be coachable and you're decisive, meaning you take action, I can absolutely help. So the best way would be to simply reach out to me on LinkedIn, and then I can assess your situation, what's going on. I can help you create a plan. And if, if I am the best person to help you, I will tell you. And if I'm not, there's no problem at all. I love to give people the solution as well. So different ideas or different people even that can help them out. 
because I am service driven. So nice. if someone connects with me, I'm always thinking about what do they need? What do they want? Mm. Can I help? If yes, great. If not, who else can? And we come up with that plan together. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Um, what, was there anything else you wanted to kind of get to today or, or that you wanted to bring up that we haven't talked about maybe? I think that's great. Yeah, it was such a great conversation. Thank you so much, Carl, for, for the opportunity and yeah. for the questions. I always believe seriously that uh, every moment is perfect the way it is. And mm. what we are talking here today, I'm 100% sure that whoever's listening to this is like, whoa, this is exactly what I wanted to hear today. And, and that's what keeps me going. I know that um, whoever is going to have access to this will be like, wow, this makes sense. If it, if it doesn't make sense today, it's going to make sense in the future. <laughs> so I think this is great. Thank you so much. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. It's been, it's been great talking with you. Um, I hope we can catch up again sometime, maybe. Um. <laughs> At any time, you know, you know where to find me. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Great. All right. Thank you. Take care. Thanks.